Hi guys and welcome back to another uh, tutorial. This is the sixth tutorial in my Windows Phone 7 development for Mango. Um, in this one I'm going to be showing you how to use try and catch to stop the application just completely crashing on the user and yeah makes it a little bit more professional because no one likes an app that crashes. So <clears throat> I'm going to totally wing it again. I've got an idea of what I'm going to try and do. So it will be involving the isolated storage that I showed you in the fourth video. So this kind of like a nice recap as well. So first thing is to create the project. So I'm going to call this try catch breaker. If that's how you spell breaker. Go for that. Okay. <clears throat> so now we've got our application. First thing I'm going to do is title it and I'm going to call it try and catch. It's not like a game of it or anything or manhunt. It is just try and catch to stop code crashing in the application. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to have to chuck over a few things here. So we'll put a text box in to start with because we love using text boxes and just take the text box bit out of it, out of its actual content. Um, and then rename this to my text. But make it my text box. Okay. Uh, then we're going to add a button underneath that. Um, yeah, put the button there. And we're going to put the content of the button to add info. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get a text block because we need one of them now. Um, I'm going to try and make it look central just to make it look a bit neater. Okay. And I'm going to just at the moment I'm going to put it as empty. Uh, as, as the actual content of it and make it a little bit bigger okay and now we need one last button uh, oh we didn't want to do that I can't bother to get rid of it either okay so okay it's really going to start causing me trouble now so there we go now we have another button in there and we're going to call this one get info that seems relevant so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you would add information to the isolated storage in this box up here and use this button to add it and then using this button to get the information but what we're going to do to start with is we're going to purposely build it to not work just so that I can show you how it would crash and how you would solve any crashes so first thing to do um, I didn't change the name of this actually so I'm going to call this my text block <clears throat> there we go so first thing is double click on the add info button that we made and we're going to go up to the top and we're going to add the isolated storage um, because we're going to need that. So we need to do the system IO isolated storage. Okay. And then in here we need to do private isolated storage settings. Name it as app settings because it's just so much easier to do it that way. And then again isolated storage settings dot application settings. And we're there. So we can now actually use that. Um, first thing then will be on the button, so the button one is the add info button and what we're going to use here is we're just going to do um, app settings dot add and we're going to just add um, a file called content and then inside that we're going to put um, the text of that text box that we added in. so it'll be my text box dot text oh text there we go so that will now add into the isolated storage for us um, what we're going to do now is go down to the little my text block and the get info button and on the get info button we're going to double click on that and we're going to make it so that when they click on the button our text block that we got so my text block dot text is equal to app settings content so it will find out what's inside content um, if you do top dot to string then if someone decides to type in numbers it it'll be fine. It will allow them to bring the numbers over as well. So this way what we've got is when we click on the button 2 which is our get info button it will change our text block to whatever's in the app settings. So what we can do to try that out is obviously run the application up and here we go. So if I click get info now it crashes. Okay and this is what we're talking about trying to fix today. So this is crashed and that's not cool. So we're going to just stop the application quickly and we're going to use the try catch. So if we put a try in here and then underneath this we put the catch. 
what we can do is when it knows when it tries to do this and it fails instead of doing that and crashing that would have crashed the application on the mobile obviously because we're in the um in the uh, visual studio it tells us there's a problem but on the mobile it will just crash so what we're going to do here under the catch is we're just going to add a message box to show to say um couldn't find info under um content in isolated storage um obviously that means something to us and it wouldn't to a user who doesn't know what they're doing they probably don't even know what isolated storage is so yeah so anyway what we can do now is if we debug it again and we press it it caught it it says here's our little text box we uh, our little message we made for a message box couldn't find on un uh, info under content in isolated storage okay and we can keep doing that we can keep trying to crash it but it won't crash so what we'll do here is if we add some information up here um, like student again I could have chose something smaller but in all my videos I like to use that if I click add info um, we know it's added the information we should have made a box to say added but we didn't so now if I get the info it appears and we don't have a crash anymore so what happened here is when we when we're clicking this it's tried to get the information from app settings content and it's there because when we did this add info button it added the content for us now I'm sure if we click this again yeah it's gonna crash because we've already got something in our isolated story in our app settings because we've already clicked the button once and added that first bit so it can't add another one under the same name so I mean we could we could just put another try in here just for example this wouldn't be a good solution to this problem but this is just to show you again how we stopped the last one so show um, content already exists in isolated storage okay so now when we run it and we add in our thing here okay so I'll leave it for a sec to show you this is how we were catching it before we add our info and then it appears but now when we try to add it again it's telling us it's already existing in the isolated storage so I mean that would be a good fix if you had two text boxes say one of them you were using to name the file uh, name um, the, the content you were putting into isolated storage and then the second box could be used to put the actual content itself but in this situation the best thing to have done would have been an if statement to say if app settings already contains content then give the message over to the user but try and catch works fine okay guys well that was the um, sixth tutorial uh, I have got more tutorials to come in the next one I'll be showing you how to download a web page's content um, so that you'll be able to kind of like bring down a web page grab content from it and use it I mean I used to use it with uh, in, alongside PHP so that I could connect to a database because I didn't need to do any sort of other complicated connections so maybe I'll show you how to use a PHP page to get some basic information out of a database and into your application so yeah, thanks guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll speak to you next time.